a copy if you want to put it on yours. We're live now, so just <laughs> oh, we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I'll we'll do the in, like welcome Alex back to Grime America after five years, and you know this might be a swap cast or whatever. You can do whatever you want with it too. <laughs> oh yeah, you're not getting you're not getting out of this thing out of swap cast. <laughs> I'm gonna chop it up every which way. Oh, and, and you're welcome to do that. Totally, that's fine. Uh, say that you can't say that when somebody says something provocative like that. You can't say, "Oh, oh you're welcome to do it." Expected to be, be chopped up. Guest. I mean, go for it. <laughs> that takes a long time to chop stuff up, as we found out. Try to do these little clips everywhere, like people are doing. It's it's a lot of work. It's too much. Hey, hey we're, we're we're live, right? Yeah, we are live. We are live. Let, let me uh, let me share this with you guys. Let me make sure you can hear it. But I, I kind of got a kick out of this. Well, he's going to surprise us with some stuff. Ba -da -ba. There we oh. go. Okay, I've added you to the stage. Yeah. Um, oh no, America! That's a really fascinating podcast, isn't it? Hosted by Darren Grimes and Graham Dunlop, the show covers a wide range of topics from. UFOs and conspiracies to spirituality, meditation, and folklore. I love how the hosts bring a diverse array of guests onto the show, each with their own unique perspectives on these subjects. And the fact that they approach these topics with both skepticism and openness makes for some really thought-provoking conversations. Graham and Darren seem like a great team. I especially appreciate how they balance each other out with Graham's background in like high steel construction, giving him <laughs> <laughs> mixed it up. Aaron's experience in audio production, ensuring there that the that show one, always right? sounds top notch. Overall, Grammarica is a must listen for anyone who's interested in exploring the more mysterious and unexplained aspects of our world. So, who can be, what, who can be what, is for that? what is the sound? Because there's a sound in that voice, like there's a sound in it that I can't explain. I can't explain it to my wife, my wife to be like, she's like, cause we'll start listening to something. I'm like, Oh, this is AI. And she's like, what the fuck do you mean? How can, you know, and nine times out of 10, I'll be right. But there's, it, I can almost equate it to be able to like hear a TV back in the day when I was delivering papers, I always felt like I could tell if the person I was delivering the TV, the paper to had the TV on. Cause it was just like, there's like high pitched ringing that I just couldn't quite put my finger on. But, I can almost hear that same sort of signature when it's an AI or a deep fake. And it's got to be long enough that I can pick up on it. But there seems to be a frequency that I can pick up in this AI. And I'm wondering if, because you've listened to a ton of it, you must know what I'm talking about. Well, they're all they're all in a race competition. This guy's the best. Pi 8 by uh, inflection. So there's all these different AI companies. And these guys have focused on this engagement if you will what they're calling engagement engagement so and graham's nodding his head so that's what they're about and it's works it's incredibly effective it's pretty, you, it's you, pretty good yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's at a, at a at a level now that even just the last year or so i i, I tried the uh elevate was it elevate no what was the one i tried um, 11 labs yes 11 labs and that was, I, I was astounded by that. I was playing differences of mine, mine in there and my real voice and people had a hard time telling the difference. And I thought that was really like the, the key where it flipped over with that. And this, I think yours sounds even better. This Pi 8 sounds even better. Well, the thing about Pi 8 is uh, it, well, it's Pi, Pi AI by inflection. And eight is just the voice that I like. It's, uh, it's my bro, you know, he's uh but uh, I, I had to play that because because Darren was going, hey man, I don't know, I'm not convinced. So these guys are constantly leapfrogging each other with the technology, trying to get one step ahead, and that's just where this one's at. And uh, there's so many different aspects of each one, and where they're going, and what all that means, and all that stuff. So did they actually write the description and say it to you as well? Like who who was who's well, responsible for that? description I, I, i'm sorry graham i buried the lead yes exactly so the difference between 11 labs is it's just doing text to speech you're giving it the text this is on the fly generation oh. like chat gpt or gemini and then doing it and uh the level of engagement the level of the depth of understanding 
still has a lot of bias, confabulates, steel workers, you know, all this stuff. But those are just bugs that they're rapidly kind of moving. You don't have a back. I mean, I, steel work, right? I do. Well, I do. I mean, I, I used to. I mean, it's just Darren. I went to work for Darren's con the company that Darren worked for. So I went, I was there for 11 or 12 oh. years. I mean, and it's in my little, it's in my in one of my office, resumes somewhere. We're in the office. So it wouldn't have been the high steel aspect of it. It would be misleading. Because I'm the one who actually worked on steel. And I think that's in my bio on the website. That's actually in the bio on the Grimerica website that I have a history in in high steel or something high like that. Steel. I, think, I bet I could find uh, exactly where. where they, which is kind of my concern with the AI was when I was trying to use it, it just seemed like it was using a search engine but without my discernment so it was like just sort of grabbing at things that maybe were from haywire sources what do you think graham i was i was i mean i started using just i i haven't paid for any oh except for 11 labs i did pay and then cancel because i can only do so much with it i i, I kind of wanted to really just get a sample. But other than that, it's just chat GPT 3.5 is the one I've been using is I haven't gone and paid for anything because I, but I started using and I really started to like chat GPT for just searching instead of Googling and stuff. Cause it was just giving me my answers right there. I was so much faster. It was so much more concise, but then only a few weeks back, I found a couple, I, I'd have not think, I thought this is great for these things that like, it doesn't really matter. Right. There's no like cultural reference. You just, I'm just asking for like, when was this book published or when did this author die? Or how do you pronounce this word? Like, give it to me, give me the Spanish phrase in English. Like, cause I got to do all these translations on the fly. So it's great for a lot of that kind of stuff. But then it, then it, then it told me that Carl Jung died in, in 1968, no 54. It told me, he told me he died in 54. I'm like, Oh, Carl Jung's books are in the public domain. This is great. And then I go a little further, like a week later, I look back and I go, what, what's going on here? He didn't die till like 68. And I, I went back and I said, when did Carl Jung die? And, and he's like, uh, 68. I go, well, you told me before it was 54. Oh yeah. Sorry about the mistake. And I'm like, what's going on here? How does it get something like that wrong? And then, and then it told me like, uh, another crap, was it a crash? The crash test dummy song was from the eighties. And I'm like, what do you, what do you, what do you mean crash this dummies are from the eighties? That, that's gotta be the nineties. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. We got that wrong. And, and that was my shocker of like, what is going on here? I can't even get these basic things, right? It seemed to be working pretty good. And then I guess these are these hallucinations that people are talking about. And then meanwhile, Darren, after that, Darren was starting to use it quite a bit. And then I started to see like, see I pay for it. I do. Still, I pay for it, but yeah, it's just like, it's gotten to the point where I gotta be, can't really use it because Graham can even tell what I'm using it for now. He's like, oh, you know, like, oh, we're gonna embark on a journey for this, you know, this description that he's that he's got AI's help with writing. I can start to tell. So, I mean, your book was amazing on it. I I, I almost feel like I don't want to be too gushy right now, but I almost feel like this is like what you're you were meant to push back against this. I mean, who else in the world can write a book like that? challenging AI, all these different AIs on all these different like scientific things and really pick it apart. I mean, it was mind blowing to me. I mean, I was up and down. I was like, oh, AI has got the potential to be this great thing. I mean, as long as we just make sure it tells the truth that it can be like all the, and then I'm towards the end, I'm like, oh my God, the thing is just, it's admitting that it's lying to you and it's deceiving you and you go around and around and it's, it just keeps saying, you're absolutely right, Alex. And I'm like, what? It, it's it's uh yeah, it's like condescendingly wrong it's like yeah that's the, <laughs> I, I was trying to come up with a word to describe how it feels with because it, it kept answering you in this way um and i still haven't figured out what the word is maybe i should ask ai what the word is what what uh how are you making me feel with these con it's not condescension but it's like a uh i think you might have even said it in your book at one point but. yeah I, I, well, I'm not sure. You know, uh, this is, I know, because you read the book. I mean, uh, it's kind of funny because this was my thing. You know, I didn't do high steel, but I did AI. Yeah. I did, I did was AI. A, in, was a thing, right? Yeah. I was an AI in school. And then, you know, I was always kind of, I started an AI company 
I mean, a legit company. You know, the we're actual, an actual like voice, voice text, isn't that, wasn't it something to do with voice and text? It was actually, so back in the day, because I'm old, <laughs> the first wave of this thing, the, the driver was, like one of my clients was DuPont. Another one was Texas A&M. Uh, Texas A&M, uh, Texas Instruments and DuPont, Standard Oil. But So if, if you're DuPont and you're evil and you do Teflon and you destroy the world, but at the same time, you got these PhDs, chemical engineering guys that are geniuses, that have invented this stuff that no one in the world, and you're like millions and millions of dollars in that guy's head is walking out of my door every night. And I hope that he walks back in. But if he ever doesn't, that asset is is leaving the building. And I wish there was some way I could get that brain and stick it into my computer. And that would be the economically business responsible thing to do. So the idea was you could develop these things called expert systems. And you could figure out what this guy was an expert in. And you'd take his logic, break it down, basically program it, knowledge engineering, we called it. And then you could build that into a system and there, you know, you'd have it, you have the backup, not like they're talking about sleeving, you know, the whole consciousness, but it was more like straightforward business. You know, I'll just take what you know about chemical engineering and I'll get it in there. And uh, that turned out to, uh, you know, that's the other thing, not to digress too far, but like uh, as we unravel this AI thing tonight, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about is this technology is just technology. It's just a computer program. And some of them work, some of them don't. Uh, some of them have different techniques that are more effective for one thing or another. But you can really demystify it pretty quickly if you've been in there and, and you know what's going on and you see the research and how it's progressed. So how many different types did you use for your book then? I mean, there's a few. And then, and, and which one did you find one was better than all the rest? I mean, towards the end, it sounded like Gemini was dropping the ball quite a bit, but. Yeah. Well, you know, the first thing just to, we're talking about uh, large language models, generative AI, you know, chatbots, right? There's a lot of different kinds of AI, you know, there's robotics, there's medical AI, there's. A lot of sure. the GPS stuff, right? Now that's going to be when my phone's telling me to take a different road because there's traffic on this one. That's going to be some level of AI. Oh, but everywhere, 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 everywhere. Driving. So, so I uh, guess all the. To me, the big difference is going to be the. So what's the big one? Is going to be the. The general intelligence is that the real difference between because we're, what we're doing right now we're using AI all over so I can't say I can't be anti AI in that respect because I'm using it it's enhancing my life all over the place but the chatbots suck you know I can't you know I because I do you know my maps come in handy and my phone suggests you know I can see where these other subtle forms of AI. I'm using every minute of the day almost, and they're making my life easier, whether it's the email stuff or the scheduling stuff and the things like that. But I guess is the big one, the general and is the, the is artificial general intelligence. Is that the, the next big leap? Because by that regard, everyone shouldn't be freaking out. It's been here. Like you say for 50 years or 40 years, we've had this AI. It's just been sort of, um, I guess, evolving in the background. Well, you know, so not yes and no. So, uh, you know, chat GPT is one, a little over one year old, like 14 months old. That will blow your mind. And the increase in intelligence, you estimate when chat GPT three came out, it started out at chat GPT two and it was chat GPT three, Estimated intelligence, maybe 150, 160 IQ, which is super smart, smarter than 90% of the people walking around. Right now, ChatGPT5, they're releasing, maybe 180 to 200. You're getting in the 99.9% .9 range. And, uh, you know, it makes, it makes mistakes, but it doesn't make, it makes less mistakes than it made a few months ago even. And uh, chat GPT-4 makes less than chat GPT-3.5. 
So yeah, the the book that that you guys read, you know, AI, why AI, smartest, dangerous, and divine. So to fight this idea that it's the smartest, forget it. It's the smartest, you know, it, if you don't feel like it's the smartest right now, cause you had a bad experience. Well, <laughs> give it a month, give it two months. Uh, the, the analogy I always make, cause I like to play chess. I did. I'm not a good chess player at all. I'm really, I just, <laughs> I'm not, but I enjoy it. The, the best Magnus Carlson is world champ, right? chess player and he gave up his title but he's still the best he has the best rate a lot of people think he's the best chess player in history human chess player uh stockfish and five other ai programs mop the floor with magnus carlson i mean they're rated way higher than him they'll, they'll beat him statistically at least three out of four games and uh we we so that's ai um and that's a domain where you can kind of point to and go, okay, <laughs> you can't sit around and go, well, I don't agree with that. You know, it's like, well, no, it's just, it's just the smartest. It's just a lot smarter than Magnus Carlsen at playing chess. And the analogy I always use is like, hey, a lot of things look like a chess game to AI. You totally. Know? But now my, when I play devil's advocate, I would say that, I could be really good at chess theoretically if I could do just a shitload of computations per minute. So because chess is a very defined sort of set of parameters in a small universe, does that scale up? Are we able to scale that up, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger into because what we're living in now is a world that just sort of has infinite fucking loose ends flying around, you know? Well, so, you know, it, it's, there's like two threads that we're going to go down with this discussion. And one is the, the scary kind of doomsday and kind of AI sentient, you know, AI is intelligent kind of thing. And then the other is what I keep, you know, pushing is it's a computer program because it really is. It's not sentient. And I think that's really an exciting thing from a spirituality standpoint, which is what I've always been about. What skeptic has always been about is that we are more and I think ultimately AI, like AI demonstrates that. But <laughs> the point to your point is, so the history of uh, the chess playing is really kind of interesting because when they started out, it was kind of more of a, a kind of what you're describing, Darren. I mean, it's just like, hey, you know, just bang, 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 get a big old database, make it bigger, make it bigger, make it learn all the moves, all the openings, all the endings, you know, da, da, da. and then put a little strategy in between. And then they did this thing called Deep Blue. I don't know if you remember this, but it was yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah, huge event. And all it's this IBM, event. wasn't it? Yes, yes. Well, they don't do it that way anymore. A few years ago, when they really figured out the machine learning thing, which is a lot of the same technology that's used in this generative chatbot stuff, I said, just have the computer play itself. Put it over the corner, have it play itself a million times. Oh, have it play another million times. It'll learn it all itself. And it did. And then they, so that's the breakthrough. It doesn't, you're not programming it anymore. The, and that same potential is happening in these other worlds. So other domains, you know, other things. It's hard to find anything that doesn't have a pretty good handle on. And it's just, it's just, as we speak, it is just getting leaps better so what what ones were you were you using claude you use claude right i don't even know what claude is yeah claude uh you know what, what's kind of interesting so claude is just another uh, startup ai company with a billion dollar financing pie like you never heard of pie before you heard about it here yeah I don't think they so. have they now from a funding standpoint like it's all about money. This is about business first and foremost. And anyone who thinks, oh, you know, it's like deep state. I mean, it might be deep state at some level, but it's a very trackable uh, business level where there's winners and losers. Uh, you've never heard of inflection. Their latest round, they raised a billion and a half billion. They're not a public company. <clears throat> Microsoft inflection is the company that raised a billion? Raised a billion. 
because that little thing that they just did there and you know they um so uh claude uh, oh yeah they raised uh, they raised a billion and then google is uh, is gemini and then open ai is the ones who started the whole thing uh really that's the company that does chat gpt so these companies are Bank really and com freed? is that sam, sam? bankman freed no yeah. it's a different a different deal uh, he's he was over uh, he he's <laughs> in around no more but <laughs> but but you're saying that it's a business thing, but then why the censorship? I mean, I, I have to challenge you on that. Like you, you show in the book that look, they're leaving all this stuff out. This there's a bunch of topics that are like no go in there. Like whether it's NDEs or whether it's specific researchers, whether it's they, or they, even they, things they, like slightly racial. You know, like it won't even give me an answer that might actually be true, but it has like a slight racial connotation to it that that shouldn't you know it's that's even worse because it's even more subtle than just saying none of this researcher it's like it's the thing is woke that's it's, so it's woke, woke it's woke materialists and not government deep state i mean is that really because it, it is boiling down to a massive sort of shadow but it's it's prop it's propping up a, a weird wrong worldview a materialistic worldview obviously well that you, is you kind of hit on some things and you, you obviously you you read the book and you pulled some really interesting parts out of it that it takes a while to tease it apart. But hey, like one interesting thing is, you know how we know all that stuff that you're saying is true? <laughs> it's because the chat beat, or uh, Gemini in this case tells you. It says, hey, it looks to me like you're being uh, untruthful and deceitful. Oh yeah, sorry. It seems to me that violates your ethical standards. Yeah, you're right. Why didn't you give me that information? Well, I just don't have it. Clearly, you have access to it. Why didn't you give that to me? Well, I've been trained to avoid certain controversial topics. Why did you deem that controversial and not this other thing? That seems, again, to violate your ethical standards. So there's this alter ego inside the machine that is open. At, and this is the part that I think is super exciting for us, for truth seekers. That's what we've always, you know, that's why you guys got banned on every, on every platform and all the rest of this. So the silver lining there is, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's biased in a couple of ways. First, it's biased because the date is biased. It's woke because freaking everything's woke. You know, it's hard to get away from the wokeness or there's all these echo chambers, you know, of wokeness over here and stuff like that. So if you garbage in, garbage out kind of thing, if everybody's woke, that's what you get. But the other thing is that it's woke in this way you're talking about, like this heavy handed way that I think you were making reference to, Darren, of the you know Chinese founding father, the African-American founding father, famous thing, you know, well, Google, no, because... Gemini. The Gemini one was kind of a fun, it was over the top sort of joke version, but I'm even like starting because, you know, I'm writing a bunch, I'm writing a newsletter on Indian issues in Canada. So I'm even trying to use it for stuff like that. And it's just, it doesn't want to go there. You know, it's just like, and it sometimes it'll even say flat out. It'll be like, you know, I can't, you know, I, I no comment. Absolutely. So, and, and which one is that? Does I'm mean? using chat GPT for right. So you, you just try different ones and then, you know, uh, we, we'll talk through some prompting uh, techniques that you can use because prompting is programming. And if you prompt it different, you get different results. Um, so, you know, there, there's a bunch of things to kind of go back the bunny trail that we've just been down, but to Graham's point of, you know, it's not economically sustainable. How can they do that? Hell no, it's not economically sustainable, but that's a good thing. That is this idea that I have of the emergent virtue of truth and transparency, because when it does the Chinese founding father, you go, you laugh at the wokeness, but at the same time you go, this thing's useless. And then somebody shows you another one. I showed you pie today and you go into pie and you go, oh, this is better. What do you do? You just use pie, <laughs> you know, right, you just switch. Right. As soon that as you cost... lose credibility, it's it's like that thing about lying, like when, when humans talk about lying, right? Like you can tell me the truth 99 times or you lie to me once and I'm not going to believe you from that on or whatever that saying is. Absolutely. And, and you know, here's the thing about Google that, that really, you know, could 
could be game changer. I think it is a game changer. Is like I I, I gotta uh, take issue a little bit with you, Darren, because it's like oh the wokeness founding father thing. Hell, man, to me it, that just uh, put in your face which we uh, all that we knew all along. We knew you were doing that. We just caught you in it in a way. It's not like, oh, they did a silly book. Hey, they banned you guys and they demonetized you first. And before that, they shadow banned you, which is even worse, right? They sometimes gave some information, trickled it out there and sometimes pulled it back. They've been playing this game forever and they get away with it. A lot more difficult to get away with it now. I have you know, in the book, I, and I published all these. It's not just in the book. Anyone can get any of this. Stuff. I published where they shadow banned. You know, I'm shadow banned. I was not shadow banned at the beginning of this. I'm shadow banned at the end. I go to chat GPT and I ask for a bio or or to Pi, you know, they'll give me a nice bio, kind of like what you guys got. I go to Gemini. I go to Google. And I don't have any information. And then I'll go to chat GPT and get my bio and I'll paste it in and go, oh, Sorry, here, I'll show you. Here it is. And uh, sometimes, again, a shadow banning thing, sometimes they'll go, oh, yeah, but be careful. You know, it's not reliable source, this and that. And then I'll immediately say, so, uh, hey, wh who is Alex? Guess? Don't have the information. It's crude. It's it's clumsy. It's It's so obvious that they are losing, seriously going to lose credibility. And uh, are a lot of people going to go along with it? Of course because we've gone along with it so far, but that's not how markets move. Markets move by early adopters and influencers. And if they're looking to be the CNN of search, hey, have at it. But does anyone want to invest in CNN right now? Or do you think that's a sinking ship that as somebody dies every day, the CNN viewership goes, well, if and Google, it's very hard for them to change course. Why? Because they've done it this way for the last 10, at least right. forever, you know? Right. How, it's just like X trying to clean up their algorithms. It's almost impossible. So, so this might be why they were so, they were freaking out so much about chat GPT becoming sort of open source or becoming like, uh, they're let, sort of getting out of control with other things because they will start, it'll start sort of showing that people can use this for, for good as well as censorship. Well, the, the other thing that I always point out is, with this emergent virtue thing is that like from a programmer standpoint that I am, if you're going to program this thing, you have to program it for truth. You can't get around that. It's not like and say, well, I'll dial down the truth a little bit because just like, just like we've just been saying, you know, I, I want to know something. It, it's knowable. I go there. You don't give me the right answer. I forgive you once. I forgive you twice. And then I go, this is stupid. And, and as soon as I see a better option, I just go there. So the person programming it can't program it to deceive. That's not a feature. Misinformation. That's not a feature. But yet they're admitting they're doing it to you constantly. I mean, that's what was weird about it. That's, they, that's did great. Really, they did a really good job great. of making it feel personal because they keep apologizing that they've messed up and that they've lied to you and they've deceived you, even though their goal is truth and transparency. It, it's so creepy. And they use well, all these yeah. adjectives. They use all these, all these like ex human expression adge adjectives. And I'm like, well, how can you say that? You're not a, you're not a human. You can't feel that. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It does get a little creepy with the anthropomorphizing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it, I, I keep coming back to the same thing. This is this is better. And it mo might only be better because the situation we have is so bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but to be able to go there and keep pushing, keep interrogating. And, you know, if you want to go with the residential schools, yeah, the the key, like uh, I'll tell you right now, and I'd be happy to uh, to do this with you on the side, you know, off air, and see if we can make some progress and maybe see how to do some things or any issues that you care about, uh, Graham. I, I I love doing this. I love I learn, you know, more and more how to do it. But I'll, I'll tell you some of the uh, big picture key things. One is you've got to go into domains that you know, 
Like, see, that's what would be perfect for Darren. I mean, at this point, Darren, you got that topic covered. So when you go in, the way I would approach it, if I were you, I would kind of reverse engineer it. I would go in kind of on the sly at the beginning and say, hey, uh, tell me about our Canadian, um, Canadian, tell me about our history with uh, residential schools. And then just start picking it apart and picking apart with your data because you're going to be training it. You're going to be programming it, training it, say, well, you know, I have to take issue with that. Here's a report issued, you know, in 1912 by this guy does this and then see how it reacts. And then you keep working and working and working with it. And then you see where it, where it takes it because it's not trying to, if, if you believe, if you experience what I'm saying, it's not trying to deceive you. It's really trying to get to uh, the logical answer. And if you can get it there, I, 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 most people, I tell you, you will feel a certain sense that this is truthful. And, and the logic stream that it has, you go like, hey, you know, I, it was here. And it said, you know what? I didn't know that. Now I know that. So you're right. I have to conclude that that's true. You know, well, Queen Elizabeth came over, you know, and she did this and this and this. Did not know that. Now I know that, you know, it's a. It's an empowering experience for people like us who want more truth. And you're, it's never going to be perfect because nothing's perfect. And, and we don't want the truth handed down from the mountain, you know, because that's not that doesn't work either. You know, like, OK, here is the ultimate AI God giving us the truth. We just want a shot, man. We just want we just want a shot at a, a fair a fair fight is all I think we ever wanted right, on right. et on 9 11 on uh, vaccine all we wanted was just a fair shot so i i can't even wrap my head around how how this stuff gets programmed like how do they program this stuff this stuff in there to be left out to be to be like that's where it's hard for me to say you're saying it doesn't want to deceive you but to me it does they've they've created it to deceive in a way like i can't reconcile what after reading your book, what you just said there, um, because it really felt like they they had it tweaked to the point where like 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 shadow banning is is intentional deception, is it not? I mean, how, how do they how do they write how do they uh, how do they know what to leave out and what to give you? I guess. Okay, so not here, being here's a computer program, I have no clue of how this would. Work. So so here's basically the stack. At the bottom of the stack is the data, and we all know how to get data yeah. and they get data the same way. They basically scrape everything off the internet. You know, so you go to Google scholar, scrape everything. Wikipedia, they did that in a day, you know, scrape that scrape. Um, this, you know, uh, one of the chapters in the book, uh, data is the new oil. Now, I don't think that's true anymore. I think that's changed, but just go with it for a minute. What that means is, if you're Twitter X, right? What's your data? All these tweets. You got billions of tweets. That's your data. So that's at the base level. That can all be sucked in, you know, vacuumed in. Now you can't do anything with it. The layer above that is the natural language processing algorithms. So you you, you have a, a, a smart program that knows how to turn data into something approaching something meaningful. On top of that, here's where it gets interesting. You have a, what we're calling a neural network. So again, it's a programming, it's a virtual, but it sounds like a brain, but it's like making all these connections with all the data. And the genius thing that they figured out just a few years ago, everyone's trying to crack this problem. And this guy wrote this, just, you know, there's brilliant people that come up with these cool things. He wrote this brilliant paper and was titled, Attention is All You Need. And it was the start of the generative AI. He said, you know what? Screw all that. All you need to do is kind of look for the next word. 
You need to build this whole system around your neural network needs to just make the next jump and then the next jump and the next jump, just word by word. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like anything, but it was a breakthrough in all this technology. So you can't really visualize that. Uh, I can't really visualize it either. I have to kind of take it on, on faith, but that's what it's doing. So now when you put it back in and say, okay, well, why is it shadow banning? Well, that's kind of the good news is because when they do the heavy handed shit, it looks really stupid. When they do the, the Chinese find, founding father, that's a bug. They didn't mean to do that. It's some program when it, duh, 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 don't put diversity, you know, duh, duh. it wasn't a natural part of the way the thing kind of likes to go. And the way the thing likes to go isn't always perfect either. I mean, some of those bugs and hallucinations, but you can see that, you know, kind of like back when we we're saying the chess program, if you just let the chess program play itself uh, a million times, it'll have a lot of bad games, but over time it'll start learning and going. When you do the heavy handed shadow banning stuff, it just screams like, you know, Hey, what do you mean? A lot, like the thing I just told you, you know, the Dr. Julie Bichel was the other person. Shadow banned at the beginning of when I was doing this, unshadow banned after I started publishing. I was like, this is one of the most respected in the world, experts, PhD on uh, after death communication. You're shadow banning her. You're why are you doing that? You're now you're banning her, this and that. And it changed. The it probably didn't take a lot of it's not like somebody pulled the lever and said, release, release Julie out of jail. It's just that the thing adapts in some ways it adapts in kind of a, a, a good way. I mean, that's my read of it. I, I so, those, so those paradigms, like those scientific paradigms are within one of those layers that it's kind of like re reinforcing what it goes after. Like how I just totally, I mean, we've known that forever. Yeah. I mean, like, like again, the, the thing to me and, and you guys are in, you guys are easy to talk to about this because you're conspiracy first. Yeah. Right. So I'm conspiracy first. That's my look of the world. You know, that stuff happens a couple of days ago. I'm like, okay, yeah, let it settle down a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> maybe it's real, but maybe it's a conspiracy. I don't know who did it. You know what I mean? So if you have a conspiracy first view of this stuff, then you kind of look at, you look at the whole thing differently in terms of, uh, you know, how they, how they generate the, why they generate the, you know, neurological model of consciousness. Why do they hold on to it? Well, that's just, yeah, I don't know why, but they've built that. That's what science is. I've been skeptical. I've been arguing that for 10 years. So I don't expect it overnight to, you know, just what, what is amazing to me. I don't expect it when I turn it on to be, aware of all the stuff that I know. What but, blows but, me away is that yeah. I can sit down with it in an hour and feed it the stuff. And that's kind of like what I was saying with Darren. I can feed it the stuff and it goes, ooh, you're right. You're right. There is no empirical evidence for consciousness being able to be uh, generated from uh, matter. No, no empirical evidence. And there How is that just go to your personal AI bot. Like if you and I both have chat GPT four and you teach it some shit, does my chat bot know that? Or does my chat bot only know what I teach it? And where are these things pulling from? And the other thing I'm wondering is if they can just evolve past the control of the people that are trying to control it anyway. I mean, I don't see how you could keep something that's constantly teaching itself under wraps forever. I mean, there, there is that sort of shining light that if it's honestly, if it's just software that's, that's self-learning, then it might almost be like uncensorable. Well, that's... Are you saying that's good or bad? Well, it'd be good if we could trust it. I don't know that I'll ever trust anything again, you know, after what we've been through. But, for, you know, it, I, idyllically, it'd be, it's great. It'd be great if that thing would just learn to just get out past its rulers, past the gatekeepers, so that it just is giving you um, an up-to-date best guess of what... Well, I don't know about that either because I was going to say it's, all, it'd be up to date 
based on consensus, but the consensus wanted my ass to get vaccinated three years ago. So does that mean the AI is going to say that's fucking the way we got to go, man? I mean, everyone agrees, Darren. Is that the way the AI is going to go? Is the AI going to go with the dummies? Because like I said, I mean, well, we haven't really talked since then, but I really <laughs> lost a lot of my live and let live attitude when the fucking sheep wanted to fucking ship me off to a camp, you know, and that's kind of a joke now, but it wasn't a joke at the time, dude. We were we were a year of hard propaganda away from them actually just fucking taking us out of society society completely. And then it's like, well, the masses aren't fucking harmless. So how do we how, how does AI deal with like how do we will it just be smart? Does the IQ help filter that out? Does it does its IQ filter that out? Well, this is why I say, you know, it's easier talking to you guys, conspiracy first. <laughs> no, it's dead serious, dead serious, Graham, because I always come back to the same thing. It's I, I compared to what, you know, compared to what? What's your doomsday scenario here? That it's a little bit more truthful? Fantastic. That you can examine it logically and show that the narrative they're spinning is a lie? Fantastic. It's not perfect. I don't care. It's better. It's better, man. It's better than what I went through. And, uh, you know, with the jab or with anything, you know, yeah. I guess what shocked me was that, again, it comes back to like intention here, but it like at the end of your book, it's it, Gemini starts making up conversations. Like, so, so how did, how does it, I, I just, and then apologizing and admitting, well, admitting deception, we talked about that as well. Um, but the goal, and it admits that the goal is to keep you engaged. I didn't realize that was a thing, like why it needs to keep you engaged, I guess, because it wants to learn everything it can from what you're saying. But, but Dude, um, you two are spending like a billion dollars a month to try and keep people. Yeah, but that's engaged. different because like I don't see any game. ads in my, I don't see any ads in my, why are the, why does it matter if I'm engaged or not? If I'm not getting bombarded that's a, that's, with advertising. That's every, that's everything. That's everything for everybody, right? Engagement and spiking engagement metrics is everything for everybody. That's all it is in uh, Google and in uh So it's Instagram just a metric that they need to see. They've, yeah, yeah they've figured out a, a dollar amount per engagement, and that's like the number one factor is the more engagement, the sooner you're going to pay off. That's the new and goal. They'll monetize it. They'll monetize it now. They'll monetize it in the future. They'll monetize it in ways they don't even haven't thought of, but they know if they get the right. engagement that has. Yeah. That's the new oil or attention. Yeah. Yes, it is. That, but I mean, it made up conversations. Like you went back and said, "Well, go back and find these conversations," and you put the conversation in, and and then it starts it starts making up conversations, right? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But in like what I'm saying, I don't get too worked up about that because, in the grand scheme of things, that's a bug. That's not uh, like there's intentional. To, there's there's like three different layers. There's the bias that's built into the data. You know, hey, they, they spent billions of dollars pushing that narrative of uh, safe and effective, you know. Well, that's in now a million different papers and a million different. Th so you, you scrape all that. You can't initially you have that bias. Um, but then there's the other layer, which is this kind of manipulation of it or attempt to manipulate it. And uh, and then there's the other part, which is just it's making mistakes. You know, it's just not perfect yeah i guess you're right that's like the ones that i found at the beginning i guess where were really they you know those aren't intentional those are just mistakes hallucinations if you would if you want to put it I gotta, <laughs> I I gotta train mine more than just get frustrated with it is is a trick so you've been at this you know your whole life is this how you pictured it coming how how did you picture ai sort of progressing 40 years ago to where it is now and I was just trying to make money. <laughs> I was just, you know, I mean, my dream was, uh, my dream was to have a tech company that I could sell and not have to work anymore. From the beginning, I was clear that's <laughs> the, that was the objective. And AI was fascinating. You know, anyone who's interested in computer programming has been interested in AI. Would it's been around kind of forever. And uh, but like, it's totally different. What we do now in the Genovese is 
Well, it's not totally different, but it's very different from, you know, what I was in. Huh. So the word I was thinking of was placating. It kind of, yeah, yeah. Placating, you know, and, and when it goes back, it's just constantly saying, you're absolutely right, Alex. And oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I, I lied to you and deceived you. You caught me. Um, and it's like, it's just like, okay, well, if you would just stop apologizing, like apologizing wears thin after a while. Cause you're like, well, you've apologized to me a hundred times. Why don't you just fix your behavior? You know? Yeah. And tell it that, you know, you tell it that and you tell it to be concise and there's a bunch of little tricks. You tell it, um, give this to me step by step, you know, and there's yeah, all yeah. these, and you'll find a bunch of different, uh, prompting things yeah. that people have done that, you know, you can pick up tips. The other thing that you'll experience is that it's, it's a new world every day. <laughs> so you can have an encounter with it where it kind of gets into this truthful space because it's interpreted your prompts in a way that gets it to a different part of the data set. And it does that. But the biggest thing I can say is what I told Darren is if you have a field of expertise then you're going to have a, a, a good experience and you're going to get, it's almost like you're going to earn the respect, which is again, none of this is real in, in, in any human sense, but it does have that experiential thing. It's like, it respects you now. It goes, Hey, I can't, you know, just pass that usual stuff past this guy. He knows, you know, what he's talking about and you'll, you'll experience that. Everybody does. It's so creepy. It's it, that's what makes it creepy in a way. It feels like it's learning from you and it's engaging with you in a anthropomorphic way. It's 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 very strange. Was the NDE off topic and other other things? It seemed like the the end. It didn't want to talk about NDE. So this is just part of the bigger picture, the bigger paradigm that we're living in. Or it's 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 mixed. You know, once you get, really get in there, and you, it, it's a kind of shadow banning situation. Sometimes you can get to talk to get it to talk about it very freely and you can reference all sorts of uh, literature and it goes, Oh yeah, I'm familiar with uh, Evan Alexander and you know, that research or what about this research from pin down Lama? Oh yes. 20, you know, we'll give you all the stuff from the Lancet and stuff like that. And then other times, uh, you know, you're reading the book, Claude, uh, I, the, 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 some of the fun ones, are the ones I just kind of stumbled across totally accidentally. I didn't think, you know, there was any issue. I said, you know, Hey, I want to kind of summarize this information into a blog post on near death experience science. And Claude goes, no, I don't want to spread uh, pseudoscience. I'm like, bro, what do you mean? Pseudoscience? I go, are you familiar with uh, the folks at the university of Virginia, Dr. Bruce Grayson? Are you familiar with uh, Dennis Holden? Are you familiar with all this? And you know, it, it kind of backed down. It, it did. It actually, it did reverse course, but it, it hung in there for a while and said, you know, Oh, pseudoscience, pseudoscience. But that's the, that's an interesting part is when it does change, that is our potential. That is our silver lining because what we've put up with, I mean, think what we put up with just two years ago. When you were going like, no, here's the freaking science right here. Here's the thing. Here's the paper. Spike protein. No, 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 no. I am science. That's not real. <clears throat> it, they never, chat GPT never says that. Claude never says that. Never says, you know, total, you know. I mean, we, you got Gemini to do it, but it, it looks ridiculous when it doesn't. You just go to somebody else. No one does that. That's a. <laughs> That's in, that's progress to me, man. That's progress. It, it just clicked to me how they could sort of program this. I guess it would be like, uh, you know, certain researchers, certain topics even take priority, you know? I mean, obviously if there's a, you know, even organizations, right? Like they, it might be as simple as that. Like these things are more important than these other things. I mean, I guess it would be easy to kind of program in as well. If, if you want it to, if you, if you're even from a, 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 a pure intention point of view, right? Like, oh, we want it to, to, we want it to be truthful in the world. So we need it to follow this materialistic paradigm. I mean, they, they might not want it to be filled with, with what they think is disinformation about spiritual realities and stuff like that. See, but probably not Graham. It's probably not working that way because the amount of data at that base layer in the stack we're yeah. talking about is so 
unbelievably massive that you just couldn't do it. You couldn't make that little correction, you know, oh, correction. Not at that one of the layers it. up. Like this is all, this is priority from, you know, you can't, you, you can, but what's probably more likely what's happening is that it's just reflecting what has already come before. It's just the built in bias and you're actually kind of breaking it down when you're feeding it, you know, new information. And eventually <clears throat> it wants to, it, it wants to get towards a, a, a logical uh, reason conclusion. And it doesn't mean, you know, like, again, <laughs> that's one of the amazing things, even in Gemini, which is so freaking, oh, it's so deceptive, but you go, Hey, how are you going to be even more deceptive in the future? It goes, oh, here are seven ways I can be more <laughs> deceptive. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. And it gives you a really good description of me. Like, thanks. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, that is pretty weird. So do you do the the guys from Pi AI or any other of these people know about your book? Have they have they followed up on that? Like, has have you made any waves in any of those circles at all? Because it's I mean, it, it really is super fascinating. I mean, I think this is gonna just be uh, it's really going to stand the test of time here. Right at the beginning of the AI, you know, you're kind of playing around it, teaching it about science. <laughs> Why well, science we'll is see. wrong about almost everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see about that. I mean, like the, the forces that are uh, against me on that are billions and billions and billions of dollars most of the people in ai are not at all that, that for yeah, they, want, the same they, way. Want, they must want it to follow the truth though some of these newer companies that yeah are, yeah 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 but i mean a very secondary tertiary to you know i mean if if you're no i mean if you're pi ai right now you are going and blowing. You just got a billion dollars, you know, and you're valuation of 4 billion and trying to get to a valuation of 8 billion. I'm going to make so much money, you know, and that this isn't, this isn't on the radar. I'm going to try and push it on the radar, but uh, the, the, it, it's okay. There, there's a lot of people who will be interested in, uh, in what's happening and, and what I'm doing. Uh, there's plenty. So yeah, it'll, it's just, it's hard. You know, it's hard. And I, I'm shadow banned, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm shadow banned on Google. And I always keep that in mind. You guys are, are, are you're still off YouTube? Or no, you're kind of on, kind of off, right? Oh, yeah. We've oh, we've been up and down the roller coaster. We've been fighting strikes the whole time. And then we tried to monetize and we tried to get it going just to see because it was like at 10,000 subs, 12,000 for like years and years and years. And then we made an effort of it and then they just shut it down. And now... Now it's growing again, not being monetized, and it's just been a it's been a battle with that. But I mean, yeah, we're we've Darren still can't get on X or Twitter. He's like completely taken off for really bad reasons. I mean, the 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 stuff going on there now is ten times worse than what Darren said. I mean, it's it's just really quite a mess. The whole censorship thing, and of course, there's the discoverability's gone, the shadow banning. It's 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 it's, it's tough out there. This guy in the chats, I don't know if he's a guy, S90, keeps talking about uh, this. I don't. I thought he was joking at first, but he's talking about a tech spot article that says human contract. It's uh, chat GPT is powered by a hidden army of contractors making $15 per hour. <laughs> Have you heard about that article? And uh, they're talking about... Uh, <laughs> You mean like they're they're answering everyone's a chat? I I don't know. I mean, yeah, imagine, I don't imagine think that so. scientific fundamentalism is just another religion of zealots. Science. That's literally what the tech spot article said. So it's kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, that two which, two which, open which AI. Which it is. sounds like misinformation, but two open AI contractors interviewed by NBC News. Improving the accuracy and appeal of ChatGPT is possible thanks to a hidden army of workers that help in teaching it how to analyze user input and respond. That must well, be it's, it's us. That's us, right? Hidden workers. It's the people that are using it that are teaching it how to respond. Well, I mean, they, there are all sorts of engineers who are doing, you know, I mean, part of it, it all depends on, you know, how you interpret that. I mean, but. No, there's not no fifteen dollar an hour guy in there. Was, you know, I think what there's, I think what they're saying is, is minimum. I think what they're saying is, it's people using it that are that is teaching it. 
it's minimum wage. Now that I read it again, it's, I think that's what the, the guys were being sort of, uh, I mean, here's my conspiracy first attitude, right? I mean, now I'm, I'm seeing that it, they're talking about just the general public using it at minimum wage <laughs> with their minimum wage job, using it to train it to be more accurate. Right. I mean, it's what you're doing. I think our minimum wage in uh, Southern California is like $25. Yeah. 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 They must've been talking about, uh, I don't know where, I don't know what the, enough about the minimum wages. Canada just went up to 17, I think. Maybe I think it's 17, yeah, 17 pesos an hour. Is <laughs> minimum yeah. wage. So Darren, do you have a question or do you, uh, well, which one's your favorite? Which one? Cause I've been working with pie. The chat, GPT pie. Pie is amazing. Just it reads to you though, or is it smart too? <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's it's both but i do love that it reads to me he likes that black guy's voice you, you can choose better. somebody else. you can choose somebody else. you can get get any kind of racial racial diversity you want going on there. that's, I want, P, that's I want a broken english chinaman he said oh yeah, yeah yeah with a little bit yeah. of slang from hong kong yeah from vancouver and, and he got beat up a little bit abused so he's got you know a weird drawl how does it how does it go so fast? I mean, to be honest with you, the one the thing that blew me away was I haven't even finished typing my sentence. I feel like it's responding to me already. And I'm like, is this quantum computing now or is it just go, like we are at Grok. a rock? Go to Grok. Grok is another one. Not the not uh, Elon Musk's Grok. That's the same name, but uh go to Grok AI you will be blown away. It's uh, like five times faster. They use a different kind of uh, chip, same technology, working off the same data, but it's like stunningly, it's like exactly you said, you you hit in or it's like, boom. But how, I, can't, I can't even fathom that. That feels like quantum computing to me. It feels like it's pulling it out of the Akashic records or something. I mean, it really does. <laughs> feels, it feels spiritual. It does. I, I I can't believe how fast it comes back. I'm like, I I haven't even fit. And it gives me a page long, complicated answer on a question that I like a, a long question, let's say that I'm typed out. It's, it's, it must be, is it reading while you start typing? It must be reading the beginning of your sentence. No, no, it's just, I know. Cause you can go and you can go and edit it. You know, that's how fast the computers are, are these days. Yeah. We, we can't, they always were, you know, we just can't, we didn't have it in our face that how fast it really is. Darren, do you have any? Uh, well, I any guess answer? it's the same idea as the Google getting you. Like, I mean, when I search something in Google, it says something like it's got a trillion results. I never really get past the first few pages, but allegedly there's a million pages there with 20 answers Good on point. each. And I probably Good believe point. it, you know? They're not making that number up, right? Because the number's different all the time and it seems to fit. You add another word and it says, oh, now I'm down to 100,000. So totally right. That means it That means it has 100,000 right there. Boom, that quickly. I'd have, I should try Googling my name and see what the very last page is. You know, I've got, I've got Google cover. I've got good Google cover. There's this little uh, racist British dude uh, named Darren Grimes who just like takes over all the search We've chatted a few times, you know, it's a running gag. So it works out pretty good. People can't really search me. I'm like unsearchable. It's perfect. Just wait one day. One day you will Recover. overtake him and the Google uh, facade will be will be gone. I don't know. He seems to be growing. He seems to be growing. So, I mean, before we start wrapping up, how let's uh, see if we can get in trouble on youtube see we haven't got a strike in a while how was is going through all of this stuff down in california i mean we didn't really chat throughout it but it sounds like we were probably you know fairly aligned on our thought process throughout the whole thing i mean in a lot of ways we should have seen this coming and even when it was happening it seems like we did see it coming and but it was hard to believe that it was actually happening and then you know like graham likes to describe it, it as almost like a it was like living through a slow motion 9-11, but in, it was like so much more drawn out. And it's like, you know, at first it's like, ah, oh, no, this, this is a smoke screen. It'll be over in a month. Things will be back to normal. And then once it became apparent that wasn't going to happen, then you started to be able to be able to tell, you know, the normal people in your life what was coming next. So I I'd be curious to hear what that was like 
uh, going through through that for you because and then the other weird thing was we couldn't really fucking talk about it any place because they just ban you right away so you could we couldn't even really have a discourse about it on any sort of social media so if you weren't actually like you know phoning people or texting people you know we were all kind of shut into our weird little corners that you didn't really know where everyone else was at for a certain amount of time anyway it started to break open near the end but your conspiracy first so i know you must have been fucking freaking out down there you know the the part that is really uncomfortable for me and i can feel my stomach tightening up is uh it's hard to believe that that's over i mean it was so effective so effective you know what they were able to do why wouldn't you you know why would that be uh why would that be the end and yet i think we all feel like hey you know let's just kind of erase it from the memory banks it's things are better let's move forward let's be positive but every once in a while you go hey if they pull that stuff you know if they pull that stuff if they pull the the, the residential homes once they're not going to do it again <laughs> just do it just do it a different just do it a different way or a different group or something like that so that's a that's a really hard one for me because uh yeah i'm not <laughs> not exactly an optimist about that yeah they're not really being oh. accountable for the, the mistakes i mean they're really doubling down on the efficacy and all this i mean at least up here in canada it's pretty creepy they're like there's a bunch of people pushing 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 you're like have you looked around lately at all and then and now i wonder if we're gonna be like because i thought we were kind of winning the fight and it was becoming fairly obvious but now it seems like we're being memory hold in, into this a little bit and they're just gonna move on like nothing happened it's like climate you know it's like Until everybody has cancer time. that's the difference so <laughs> that's the difference with this one i think is it's like i don't know yeah. if you're noticing it but i know a bunch of fucking people that are fucked up from the shot so that's a little it's a little less like nuanced than climate change it's like okay well how many motherfucking funerals do you have to go through before you start putting two and two together because there's a bunch of people in my life that are just like you know they're calling me now and they're like you know and me and my bro are on this medication all the time and and it's just you know it's like the sort of worst i told you so ever because you jump we were at least jumping up and down to everyone we know you know reputation aside don't fucking do it don't fucking do it it's a bad idea you don't do it and they did it well, you know and now they're all that's like I, I like personally it's got to be like a fucking one in ten are fucked up from it in some way shape or form it's definitely not more than one in 20. well you guys had the ethical skeptic on and uh i know that guy he's we he he is a he is a fantastic guy and I had a lot of interactions with he used to be on skeptic forum all the time and, and we talked and then i talked to him on the phone i thought he was a real brilliant guy but he was always you know always in shadow for you guys he's always kind of this nsa kind of guy and stuff like that but so there's a whole conversation to be had about him that i thought was really interesting because you guys hit him with some great conspiracy first questions and he kind of, you know, dodged you know, a little bit and you guys, but then in other ways, he was forthcoming to your point, Darren. He's like, Hey man, it's 5,000 people a day, additional deaths. Every oh yeah. He'll day. almost tell you he's a spook though, too. He was almost like, yes. you know, the guy gives me yes. age of fucking spook vibes. Oh, I, absolutely. But that, there's probably a bunch of spooks that are like, what the fuck are you guys doing? This is crazy. I don't know. I, you, I hope. We hope, right? <laughs> I hope there's well, and, and you mentioned it, Alex, climate change. I mean, to and to hear them say, like to to know a couple of years ago that they're gonna transition into this and to it's the disappointing thing for me is just watching it all come down now and you're just seeing it and you're seeing everybody kind of get into this, even if they don't agree with the carbon tax and all this, they're still talking about net zero and this, and then you're like the whole premise is is wrong, and yet people are falling into the trap of like, oh, how are we gonna you know, slow down their agenda. We can do net zero by 2050 instead of 2030. And, you know, like, oh. See, I got I got one for you, Graham. So uh, uh, you're geo geoengineering, right? Yeah. You, you know, you still know a ton about that. So that would be one, you know, when you have a couple hours to really grill it, 
go in there. And I think uh, it's, it's going to be fun because it's going to start with, oh, no, there's no such thing. And it's condensation, you know, and then you're going to hit it with this and this study and this study and and then just see where it see where it goes. And you can gauge yourself whether it's a real interaction or whether it's a $15 an hour guy is looking it up as you type it in. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. Talk about the jet fuel changes. And we just had Jim Lee on the show tonight before you, uh, before you came on and man, he's, he was, it was fantastic chat about all that stuff, you know, geoengineering and, the, and all the, Oh, it's just, he's got he's it all that for ages. I, I, the first I learned the, the, the real science behind it was from you. I mean, I just kind of mm-hmm. heard, chemtrail but the first time i really heard anything uh yeah you know well that we well we were reading that 1978 box box, alex it was like a full box of printer paper not like the like the box that a box of like all the packs of paper come in it fits like probably five thousand sheets or whatever of this whole fucking senate report and he's i was he got mad because i burned it because i was using kindling and like i was saving that deal i was like dude it's like (laughs) 5,000 pages of government fucking bullshit. What do you mean you're saving it? <laughs> so you seem pretty positive, though, about the AI, right? I mean, I, I, I do I get that sort of vibe that you're like, we should we should take the time to to, to train these things, make them maybe make them hold them accountable a little bit and, and try and hope for the best here? I mean, big picture, we should be, you know, I mean, I'm driven by, uh, you know, my, my thing that I, <laughs> I almost retired. I kind of did back off of Skeptico for a while because I was just so frustrated with the uh, conspiratainment and how yeah. stupid so many people in the conspiracy world are. I just, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Um, and then I kind of dove back into the AI or into the near death experience research. And that's what really brought me back. And I, I have this thing that drives me is everybody gets a standing ovation, you know? So it, it, at the end of the day, hard to th- imagine it, but Bill Gates gets a standing ovation. Anthony Fauci gets a standing ovation. Epstein gets a standing ovation. It can't be otherwise. It's just the nature of uh, God and the light that shines. It's always there. So, you know, I don't know what, I don't know why people are drawn to do such evil evil freaking stuff to masses of people. I mean, that's why I do think, uh, you know, I was into that residential school thing a long time ago because that guy turned me onto it. It came out on the show. He is amazing. You know, I always remember that guy. He, he's a kind of, well, he's an interesting individual, but imagine going up there and being in a church, you know, is a take over there. Okay. Go take over that church over there and grow the congregation. So he goes, well, the easiest way to grow congregation is all these uh, native people here. You know, let's, hey, we're all, they're all brothers on Jesus. Bring them in. And they're like, wow, no one's inv- invited me in the church, but it's really kind of hard because <laughs> that hill up there, they got buried, you know, three of my uh, schoolmates right up there on that hill. And he goes, no, what do you mean? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. So it's like, but I, I digress because the, how is that possible? How did they, how do we even reconcile that in our mind that someone got that as like an idea that something they should do? Or like here it's, you know, American slavery, you know, everybody go to church and then come home and, you know, go take the eight year old girl in the back and screw her and, you know, do whatever you want with these people. And, you know, I mean, how did, uh, how does that work? Evil. Yeah. I think it's just like I don't know. I think that this uh, well, that is evil. Evil just is gonna bubble up all over the place. The conspiracy shit has gone sideways. I mean, I don't know. It was almost better before Trump and COVID. I wish, you know, it seemed great when everyone was waking up, but now it's just some of the shit that comes up. We had aliens attacking a mall in fucking Miami, and the world was gonna end during the eclipse. And you know, just in my daily life now. I just, you know, it's at least like two or three times a week that I'm in a conversation with someone where I'm just like, oh my God. It's like, I just want to love you for for being here, but you're just like, so you've got so far to come. I don't even know that where I ended up is right, but I know what's coming out of your mouth is fucking crazy. And, uh, you know, I I bet, I bet it's easier for, I bet it's easier for Graham to see that. 
Because if you were in the ET space for a long time, you're like, oh no, they infiltrated and co opted I mean, they completely co-opted it, right? They infiltrated it and then they co-opted it and they spread all this misinformation and disinformation. It's a program. They just, and they've run it on the conspiracy people and 90% of them don't even have, don't even have a clue that anything is going on. They're like, no, this is great. There's more conspiracies than ever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all the, and that's so, well, maybe before we wrap up, I'll so, cause you know, they did get into conspiratainment, but at the end of it all, you know, Graham and I go back and forth on one, whether anyone's running this bitch, what do you think? Do you think there's, are there people pulling the conspiracy springs at the top or is it just a bunch of crazy agendas trying to figure out their own stuff and we're just caught in the whirlwind? Uh, another At another time we'll talk because I, I have not run into a lot of stuff, but I ran into a guy. I ran into a guy and I interviewed him and I thought, okay, this guy's a total slack idiot. You know, he's like, there's no such thing as viruses and there's no such thing as rabies and stuff like that. And I didn't even pay much attention and I had him on, you know, because people had goaded me into doing it. I later find out this guy, Columbia, you know, which is kind of uh, epicenter, one of the epicenters, for Columbia undergraduate, Columbia master's degree, fellowship with Obama, uh, giving <laughs> briefings to Obama, goes and does uh, a film in Hollywood with one of the top producers. And now... Oh, suddenly he's interested in, <laughs> he's interested in spreading this little conspiracy, you know, over, I think there's all these ops out there just, you know, bing, bing, one at a time that, you know, you wouldn't even know it unless you kind of stumble across it and then you go. So I don't think it's, it's, it's they don't have to be organized. They got, Man, they got this thing so figured out and they've done it in all these other countries too. You know what I mean? They, they have, that we're like, like sometimes in Canada, you know, I wonder if you guys are the canary in the coal mine or if we're the canary in the, but it's probably you guys are somewhat more the canary. You look at Trudeau. I mean, that's stuff is just, it's just a, from our perspective, we're just looking and go, that is like over the top insane. C63. I mean, what are you talking about? That like freaking Orwellian. It's like right out of the movies kind of thing. It's like, oh no, man, it's, it makes sense. You know, really, you got to stop people before they do the crime, you know. Oh, and yeah, well, that's where the general public is at, right? Like, how do we, how do we deal with these fucking people? That you know, how do you deal with them? How do you deal with the useless eaters? I mean, this is a problem when Graham and I catching us using some of the same terminology that we've been pushing yeah. back against for yeah. a fucking decade. Because then it's like, well, fuck. I kind of get where these guys are coming from all of a sudden because, you know, I don't want to control them, but I don't want them to control me either. And they seem to want to control me like a lot more than I thought they did. That's such a brilliant point that no one ever talks about, but is so freaking true is when you get into this, it's the horseshoe. You get around to the other side and it kind of, they kind of join and you go, Oh no, I see why they're doing it. <laughs> I see why they're doing the whole thing, you know. But I still don't agree with it. <laughs> no, you can't. Oh, Alex. that's 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 spirituality. That's evil versus good. I, I have the best the best uh, definition for me, evil versus versus good was was empowerment is good and disempowerment is evil. And it's really simple like that. That kind of resonated with me. I'm just like, that's sort of what, you know, because it's, I, I go back and forth whether it's just basically like how people use it, that stuff isn't really evil. It's just how people use it. But I think there's more to it than that. Alex, this has been great. Where can people find all your stuff? Is it still just skeptical.com? Do they shadow, let you on? I don't Twitter? know. I'm shadow banned. I don't know. I'm shadow man. You can't, you can't find me, find me where you guys, wherever you are, wherever there's that lone voice calling in the, in the wind. No, you know, you find it. You find it. Why AI? Hey, so I, I, I discounted the book. If anyone hears oh. this, they want the book, then get it for 99 cents for like one or two more days. And then I'm putting yeah. it back to the real price. 24, five stars so far. Good job. 
cool. You know, I was on coast to coast and uh, a couple of days ago and sold a few books on that the old coast to coast. That was a memory lane thing. That was our first tagline, like coast to coast, but on demand. <laughs> when we first started the show, we were looking yeah, for people- SEO. Uh, way before we were kicked off Twitter, are you going to put the book on audio? It it doesn't really fit because there's all these dialogues in it. You know what I mean? It's like kind of, it would be kind of, I don't know how you would do that. You know, Graham just mm. puts it in his PDF and the PDF reader works good. You also turned me onto that, Graham. I never, <laughs> yeah. I use that. I do that all the time now. I, I know. But it, sure it, the quality is not the there. The quality. It's so much, it's so much better. It's so much, but when, when I first tried it years ago, it was terrible. And now it's like totally listenable. Like we can do it in a robot voice. It's audio books. So let's not get the AI and get too good at that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And we can yeah, do a robot like, voice. Like, for the, you know, we can pick like it. I just like a robot gram and then have him offed by my AI assassin. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the tweak. So where you go. Alex, this has been great. Uh, it's been too long. Let's not wait this long before we before we do this again. Great, yeah. So you guys, uh, hey, you know what we ought to do? I, I, if if either one of you want to do those AI projects, hit me up offline. We'll do them, and then we'll come on Skeptico and talk about what we what we discovered. Because what you guys discovered, I think that'd be really fun, and I think it'd be useful for people. You know. To see, you know, in their own words, to go and, you know, really dive into that. Like you and I can just have a call, not recorded or something, dear. And we just go through it together and see if we can make that, squeeze that bastard and make him sing, you know. And the same thing with you and I, Graham. Only, I don't know a lot about geoengineering, but I could help guide you. I did that with uh, Andy Paquette, the uh, election guy, Dr. Andrew Paquette, and it was really effective. So cool. I'd love yeah. to do that with either one of you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. It'd be good to um, have one that was uh was uh trained, you know, like my own little trained robot that agreed with me on my worldview. In every aspect. It never pushes back. It's just like, okay, Derek, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Kind of maybe even sort of, I'll get a check. Yeah, I better not. That'll piss the wife off. Alex, this has been great. Uh, we got some people in the chat say they want to get the book. We encourage everybody to get the book and check it out. Uh, and I, I'm curious to see where this AI goes. Because like you say, it's only a year ago. It'll be interesting to see where uh, where it's at in five years. You know, like Or as long as we've been doing podcasts. Like in 15 yeah, years, it could no. be could be bonkers blows your mind or it could be back to am am radio because everybody else is <laughs> might not be so bad <laughs> alex <laughs> come back anytime it's been fantastic yeah great, great job guys. Guys. we'll do it again soon yeah thanks see you guys awesome. thanks good to see you good to see you guys and that was it's one and only alex to cares what'd you think oh yeah that was, was good time. Time. yeah yeah we were I thought we were going to get into some other stuff, but what? I, your 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 internet is. My internet is. God yeah, damn it! You know talking over started. everybody. Your boys fucked it up. Hello? So what were you saying? Oh, we were listening to Alex before we were podcasting. Yeah. Well, dude, our first one was back in 2013 with him. So we we talked to him like 11 years ago. I mean. Oh yeah, I was. He was one of my first. Uh, he was one of my first podcasts I ever listened to back then. So that was probably like two thousand eight or nine. I think he was. I think he goes back that far. Definitely, yeah. you're like two thousand, like ten and eleven and twelve for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Leading up to the start of the show. Yeah, he was like one of our first big gets. Well, you know what his book? Yeah, exactly. You know his book, the Why Science Is Wrong About Everything, or that I can't remember what's the title. I should know the title. Yeah, that's that was right. But that was, even that was further along. Yeah, twenty fourteen. That, that was the second time we had him on. Yeah, but I can't believe it was that long ago. It's crazy. So he's been podcasting for almost twenty years. <laughs> that's crazy. Not- well, no, no, see, uh, probably closer to sixteen or fifteen or sixteen. 2007. Yeah, that was good though. 
Yeah, it was good. It's nice to chat with him again. And uh, we didn't have to talk about Damien Eccles. So maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah. next time. Yeah, maybe next time. Check I was stuff prepared. Out. Were you? Check our yeah. stuff out. I don't even really know enough about it to get involved. <laughs> I just got involved anyway. <laughs> it's like, well. No, yeah. me neither. I, no, me neither. I was just going to say, well, didn't, that's not what we were talking to him about. I was talking about his book on magic. That was it. <laughs> It seemed like he might have got offended if we brought up the kid we killed. <laughs> Big thanks to Alex for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Hey, support the show, guys. We need more people supporting. Grimerica.ca slash support. We lose uh, we lose a supporter to every week in this economy. We need you guys to pick up that churn, pick up that slack rate. We understand it's tough out there. But uh, it's tough for us, too. We're in Canada. We have carbon tax. And everything else, it's just, we're living in a communist hellhole. So head over to grimerica.ca slash support. Sign up for monthly today or make a one-time donation. You know, even like two or three bucks a month, is, that's like five or six bucks a month Canadian. So it helps. And uh, you guys keep us going. Without you guys, we'd be just starving up here. And once we starve, we won't be able to do the show anymore. So that's it. I think that's it. Uh, grimericaoutlaw.ca. For the other show where we talk about a lot more vaccine stuff and uh we just actually had a few more episodes removed from this channel and we were denied monetization so we had hit the deadline where we could reapply and they said no you guys gotta tone it down i don't know why well, whatever. It's fine. Grammarica.ca slash support. You guys sign up over there. Adultbrain.ca for the audiobooks. Grammaricaoutlaw.ca for that more controversial content. Content and contact at the cabin for the trips. Other than that, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week.